Music peeps, what's good? This is your boy, Jay Will. What we're going to talk about today is sync licensing lingo and why it's important. Let's get into it. Understanding the jargon that people use in the sync licensing industry is going to help you be perceived like you actually know what you're talking about. Like for instance, if you brought a new person into some type of video game that you play all the time and they've never had any experience with it before, don't you have like this cringe when they come in and they make an inexperienced mistake? It's just, like we're dealing with a noob. So the goal of this video is to help you not sound like a noob with sync licensing anymore. So buckle up, grab a stack, and let's get started. And by the end of this video, I guarantee you, you will sound like a pro. First things first, master recording. This is very important. This is your actual printed, finalized version of a track. The one that you probably slaved hours and hours on just to make sure it sounds perfect. This is the actual music file that they're going to use on said sync license. Next is the sync fee. What is this? This is the moolah you make when you decide to allow someone to license your track behind some type of moving picture. The fees can vary depending on a lot of different factors, i.e. the budget of the campaign or video production crew, how the music is used, how many eyeballs are on it. If it's in context or out of context, there's a lot of different negotiation that your sync rep will do for that. Next is performance royalties, which is another important term as well. These are the extra earnings you obtain when your music is broadcast on the public performance airwaves. So when your track is played publicly on TV, radio, live in a stadium or a club, you deserve to be paid for it. So while you're home in your pajamas watching who knows what show and your music comes on, you're getting paid. Now, speaking of performance royalties, how do we get them? That leads me to my next term, which is your PRO. And that doesn't mean your music is pro, that stands for Performance Rights Organization. And what these kinds of companies do for you in sync licensing is they scour the broadcast waves and look for where your music has been played. And then they're the ones that calculate exactly how much you deserve as far as a royalty. And then they send you a check every quarter on your behalf. So don't forget, before you start doing anything with sync licensing, make sure you signed up for one because you could be missing out on a lot of money. And here's some examples of some big international PROs. But remember, you can only be signed up with one. Next is Le Q sheet. And basically what this is, picture a DJ playlist set for a movie, TV show, commercial, what have you. It lists all the different tracks that were used, how many seconds it was used, whether it was in context, out of context, all that stuff, which is extremely important for your PROs to track your royalties. So after a TV show or movie is finished with production, they'll write up a cue sheet as far as what music they use, and then they will send that to your PRO so they can calculate it to get you paid. Notice a lot of these terms are to help you get paid. Interesting. Blanket license. The best way I can describe this is like a Netflix subscription for music. Instead of paying individual fees for each song that they want to use in a show, they'll pay a licensing agency or a music library a lump sum fee to just have all you can eat access buffet style ability for them to go through their music. This last term is probably the most important that you'll probably need to know because it helps you actually get your foot in the door when it comes to sync licensing as a music creator. And that's one stop. Remember this term, guys. I'm going to say it again. One, not two, one stop. When you're pitching your tracks and you let them know that it's one stop, what you're telling them is that you own both the master and the composition side of the said recording you're pitching to them. Which means that even if there are other co-writers on that song, you have the authority to say, I give you full permission to use this song without having to ask the other songwriters. Very important because it makes everybody's job a lot easier. It's kind of a big deal because there's less paperwork. Now that you know the terms that you should be using, let's talk about the people that you'll be using these terms with. Very, very important. A term in a term. Inception. First and most important probably for us as music creators is the music supervisor. These are the peeps that deal with all the business and legal side of things and are the end all be all decision outside of the director as far as what music gets used, mostly because of legal reasons. Their job is also to pick the perfect songs for whatever scene or vision that the director has and is probably the biggest influence on what music actually gets used. This is why they're very important. Next is your music publisher or what I like to call a sync rep. They also handle most of the business business side of things for us so we can stay in the studio. So most people don't know music supervisors personally. And because of that, we can't normally pitch to them very frequently or successfully without having that established relationship. So music publishers, they know all the music supervisors. So our job is to make music, send it to them, and then they'll send it to music supervisors when they ask for or need specific things. So they help your music get in front of the right people. They help negotiate the best deals and they collect upfront sync fees on your behalf. 
I don't know about you guys, but I'm not a bill collector and I never really wanted to be. I just want to make music. So allowing them to take care of that is the best thing that could have happened. So partnering with a really solid publisher or sync rep, as I like to call it, is probably the best thing that you could do because it makes a world of a difference. There's two major types of sync reps. You have your sync agents and your music libraries. Although they are both trying to hustle your music to these music supervisors as often and as much as possible, the concepts of the two are a bit different. Sync agents are more like this boutique Givenchy high-end collection or catalog of music that you can use whereas a music library is more of a convenient department store like Walmart so like Walmart to Mon Pa store you'll get more personal dedicated attention with a sync agent normally and this works a lot better for a lot of artists that maybe don't have as much music to shop out for sync licensing whereas a music library especially for producers since you're making a lot of music at scale it's great to put them on these kinds of shelves because music supervisors they might not find exactly what they need with a sync agent because they have a limited catalog. You can go to a music library to find what you need a lot quicker. And what's great about both of them is that you don't have to pay them in order for them to do this. What their incentive is that they'll get paid some of the upfront fees that you get when they actually land some of your music off the top. They normally range around this percentage. If you guys need help finding these, Google's not always the best resource. I have a bunch of stuff in the description link below that you can check out. Okay, bonus round. Now that you have a lot of different jargon and terms that you can use back and forth when you're talking to new people about sync licensing, here's some quick tips that you can use to actually crush it with those terms in the sync licensing world. Number one, keep all of your music clean. That means lyrics, recordings, production, make sure it sounds professional. Do not ever send a demo to anyone unless they ask for it, which is very, very rare. Number two, be original, okay? Authenticity is very important in this realm because there's a lot of music that's getting used on a seasonal basis. So what I always recommend is to make sure that you sound different but consistent. Number three, stay organized. This is extremely important with sick licensing. This is with your music files, your metadata, which we can talk about later. If you want another video, let me know in the comments and your contact info. If they like the song, but they don't know how to contact you to get your permission, it's a wash. You're not going to get that placement. And the last and final thing, number four, that I feel has been really helpful is networking. This could be with other artists that are already working in sync, other producers, attending conferences, joining different online communities that focus on sync licensing can be extremely helpful as well. And just being a human, you could actually reach out to a music supervisor. Just don't have the buy my mixtape vibe. Okay, just don't be weird. Just don't be weird. I guarantee you if you're not, you can go much further. Oh, and I, I lied. There's actually five. The last one that I feel is even more important than networking is being persistent. Sync licensing is not a get rich quick scheme. It's a long game. So keep grinding, stay positive about the whole situation. And every time you get a no, that means you're getting closer to that sweet sounding yes. Now you got all the lingo that you possibly need to sound like you already have been making placements. So get out there and make something dope. And as always, if you dig this video and you like more information, make sure you subscribe, like the video, and let me know in the comments what else you guys wanna know about. File to get synced.